Part D, we look at setting up a notes page, which might be useful as uh, something to use in exams for accessing formulas or remembering some important information. So key to this is the idea that you might have notes that you want to store, but you might also want to have formulas set up that you wish to use should such a question arise in the exam. So we'll first look at an example that's been created, and then we'll go through the process of creating a sample one. So the one that we're going to look at is to do with correlation and regression. So let's have a look at that. In this example, you can see a few different coloured bits of text, and um, they're different. So the black text at the top is really just a descriptor of what the page is for. And on this notes page, you'll notice that there's a red, um, um, red dots around this object, the X bar. And that's because it's live. It's, it can actually um, be used mathematically. So um, the conversion formula to move from the regression statistics um, and uh, mean and standard deviation of the X and the Y variables into the regression parameters is shown. And it's live. You put in the number and you can change the value of the regression equation. But it's essentially just using the formula. Each of these maps boxes can be configured so that you can choose to hide or show the input and output. You can set the precision of each of the objects as well. And you'll see here um, in this regression equation, um, the parameter for A has got hide input. So it's just showing the output, the result of the value of A, rather than um, the, the listed, the letter A, if you like. And it's also showing fixed three rather than um, the precision that was used in the other calculations there. So that's an example of the sort of thing that you could do. And you could have a number of them stored um, either in separate documents or in um, new problems uh, or a number of new problem pages within a single document. So I think that sort of explains how they would work. And now I think to get into it in more detail, we need to show how you could construct one. So we're going to do one um, for creating a line, um, the equation of a line from two given points. So that's our second demonstration. So you first have to um, create a new document and add a notes page, not a calculator page, a notes page. And then it would make sense to give it some sensible name so that when you're looking at it in the stress of an exam, you know that it's pretty clear what this page does for you. And then insert a maths box, which is um, Control M or um, Command M on my computer. And first, let's work out what the two points are. So here are the coordinates of the first point, x1, y1. And I'm just making these numbers up for now for the purpose of the example. And here's um, the second point, x2 and y2. So we've now got the coordinates of these two points. And these are things that a user would enter in. Now we'll look at the formula for calculating the gradient which is, as you know, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So we've created in this maths box um, this formula. Notice when you press enter, it goes to the next line and then assumes you want to keep entering maths boxes. That's what we do. And now we want a y-intercept, which we can um, do by just saying y1 minus the gradient times um, x1. And notice it goes bold because they're predefined. So that's the basics of it. Um, and so now you have a um, notes page that you could use and just enter the known uh, coordinates of the points and then uh, uh, get it to calculate those um, line gradients and wide sets. We finish off by just getting a prettier version of that, um, which has it in the form that you might want. So I'm just saying um, 
y is equal to the gradient, and I'll put a text box, or just text x plus, and then I'll do the y-intercepts. And of course, you could put it in the other form where you had the y-intercept first. It could be prettier than that, so the, probably the best thing to do is to change so that it doesn't use show the word gradient. And that just means getting it to hide the input. So we'll hide the input for that. And you click away from it and you see that it's no longer there. And similarly for the y-intercept, we'll make sure that it's uh, hiding the input there. And that's pretty much our final uh, calculations that we need. Um, and we might also decide that we don't need all that extra precision. So let's change this so it's fixed three. And similarly with the y-intercept, just to make it look a little bit cleaner to look at. Um, we do need to keep in mind the nature of the problem to see whether what precision is required by the exam question. And the last thing to do is just to clean it up a bit so that x1 and y1 are on the same line, so that it's laid out in a way that makes you makes it able to be viewed without um, having to scroll. And now it looks pretty good, I think. So that's how you set up a notes page to do um, a simple formula. It makes sense then to save this file as something that's useful and easy to remember on your calculator so that when you're accessing